Okay, in this section, I want to investigate photographic reality through the writing of Friedrich Tijan and the photographs of Wolfgang Tillmans. In um, this article, Post Post Photography, Tijan summarizes the questions that link the fundamentals of photography, the generation and recording of images from visible reality. As those fundamentals come into question, so does indexicality and the veracity of the photographic image. This questioning consequentially brought about post-photography, the concept that photography was dead. But of course, like painting before it, it wasn't and still isn't dead. Veracity has always been in question and claims to truth often scrutinised. What people wanted from photography often far exceeded what was available. If you think of painting the eyes onto a subject who blinked in early photography, for instance. The bond between reality and photography was contested from early on. But what is photography? What are we talking about when we discuss it? There are so many ways to take a photograph that a technical definition is almost useless. Given that we can see how photography is treated as basically the same as if it was produced by either analog or digital. Snapshots are still snapshots in a physical album or on a cloud. Captions in newspapers online or in print make the photographs as real as ever. Your dental x-ray is given the same status of fact if it is digital or on film. The physical connection between image and reality remains intact due to the specificity of the use of the photographic image. Recurring societal exposure to photographs is cultural. We don't need to know the reality of the image firsthand but can be familiar with it by a photograph. That familiarity comes from knowing what photographs look like. To believe in photographic indexicality depends on the iconicity of photographic images. Photographs look like both the thing photographed and also other photographs. There is no difference between a group portrait of politicians and a kindergarten group apart from a cultural interpretation. I mean, really, is there? Look at them. Smile, smile, faces everyone. Face towards the camera, identification, bonding through part of a group. All those things come about through photography. Can you imagine doing this without the idea of representation occurring? Would this grouping of either the kindergarten kids or these politicians ever happen if they weren't about to be photographed? Or maybe possibly in the early days painted, but even then that's particularly doubtful. So all of the, both of these photographs are only a photographic reality. In a real life, these happy smiling faces might not like each other much. They might not get on with each other. They might not be the cohesive groups they appear to be. And generally considering, considered, they aren't. So again, this is a reality constructed for a photograph, constructed in front of a camera, a truth that is only there for a photograph. New processes have been introduced by digital photography, but most images are treated the same as if they were produced with analog. To further my earlier point, when we look at this image, we see a projection of what has been real once. The present does not project 
back into the image physically. We do that via culturation. We look for similarities and differences and pick those out to establish the differences that between cultural time. Photography is as much about generating realities as it is about recording them. This is what Tietchen was is considering when he talks about the dreamt realities of photography. And how can we start to consider those through an artist's practice? I'm going to begin this process with by a quick look at some of the works of Wolfgang Tillmans. I'm going to show you two images that come from a series of seven. Uh, these are the these are from the Transit of Venus series, two thousand and four, um, and these are a, a reprise of a photograph he took when he was sixteen. To make these images, Tillmans was using the same telescope he had when he was sixteen, and when he was obsessed with astronomy, he is recreating the technical vision he saw as a teenager. But now, when he made these, he was 46. He isn't using the instrument for scientific purposes, but to give himself a sense of the sensation of time and space, of being in relation to the crater cosmos. Knowing the position of Venus was once of great importance to navigators. It established the position of the Earth in relation to the Sun. Here he is also recreating that, but without necessity. We have that knowledge. The knowledge is there. It has already been decoded from the physical universe, but now he has made that into a picture. Again, picking up some, on some of the earlier things that I was iterating about the image as code. In discussing these works, um, Tillman says, in those years, I was mostly involving myself with abstract pictures when he was making these at 46. I made purely with light on photo paper in the darkroom, and here are a couple of examples. Those pictures are often soft in feel, while the transit, Venus transit pictures are hard-edged. But equally, they seem somehow abstract, when in fact they are totally representational, depicting the celestial body that is the source of light on Earth. I have often shown them with the abstract works. They highlight the fact that all photographs are made, never just taken. This is very, that's a very important point, um, that photographs are made and not just taken. Um, the colour on paper and at the same time evoke the sense, a sense of reality no other medium can achieve. So even these abstract works that he makes seem to move into that sense of reality. Um, they're abstract, as, but they're different to an abstraction that is available in a painting. And if you have a look at other works by uh, works by other artists, including Hiroshi Tsuchimoto's uh, lightning works, you can see um, that um, abstraction in photography is is reasonably difficult. We're always drawn back into the real. But at the same time, these images are hardly photographs at all. However, they're only possible through manipulating photographic technology. Tillmans has said, the underpinning of my work has always been the use of the photographic medium and everything it offers in order to make a new picture. Between uh, 1997 and 2003, Tillmans photographed the Concorde flying over London. And this makes me think that there are other ways to consider the post in Tillmans. His work is both, both post-photography, but it's also post-punctum. 
If we think of the punctum as a tear in the photograph, he is predicting our response by photographing the Concorde flying over London, an event so common at the time that it was a banality. Taken out of the continuum of existence, this jet bursting over London, flying off to New York at eventually the speed of sound, removed out of that, that, that multiple sense of time of seeing it flying over and moving, it becomes this rent in the sky, this little prick, as Bart talked about, in it to capture our interest. That's it, bursting off. And um, this is also seemingly, this particular image for me anticipates the colour abstractions that he was making later with uh, only light and chemical. And really that's, he was pointing out that that's what photography so much is in its analog terms. Just like Rusha, Tillmans makes other objects of his images, photo books. The fleeting, near forgotten beauty of the Concorde suited Tillmans' artistry. Um, and as Midori Matsui writes, deals with the contingent, the ephemeral and the temporal. By serially photographing the aircraft, Tillman's managed to extend his artistic practice while still meditating on similar concerns. As Matsui explains, the quality formerly expressed through the fragile beauty of adolescence, which he was more famous for photographing, was now transmitted through the ephemerality and intractable reality of moments captured through the presentation of Concord as an accidental eruption in the midst of familiar settings. The pictures widened his purview to take in almost any subject, from planetary events through to supermarket shelves. The images are also a series of 56 colour photographs of equal dimensions arranged in a grid of four rows high and 14 columns wide. Tillmans often displays his photographs unframed, or generally he, this is how he would display those photographs, as unframed and taped to a wall. But um, this, is from, this is from an installation at the Tate, and he gave the Tate permission to frame, very simply, the images in order to protect them. Um, 56 images in this grid, but there were 63 in the book. Tillman's project has the flavour of a bird watcher's obsession tracking and recording. Um, you can see from here, this, th these are the words that were taken from the front piece of, his, of, of the book, um, just relating back to the Concord. But the images shift, they shift from book, they shift into, um, um, into photograph, they become framed and unframed. They're continually moving as an object. The image becomes an object. It also becomes a series of objects. And this is post-photography, when we realise that the image fluctuates in form and physical reality. Uh, Tillman's um, generates abstracts over and using some of his more real photographs um, to to heighten the analog making of these works. If we think of photography as uh, indexical um, way of of think of looking, that you know this cup of coffee was a cup of coffee. But if we think of it in an iconical way, it becomes any cup of coffee that's been left behind to sit. It also becomes an abstraction and a thought of something else. As an image, it becomes something else. It becomes a photograph of a sky and a cup of coffee, the sky the tree, that looks like a tree. It becomes many things when we look on it as a picture, but as an icon of any cup of coffee that might have been left behind to go cold, it's, it's there. But it also points out that 
there's something about the idea that everything has been photographed and that how actually incorrect that is because that is a very indexical way of thinking of photography that everything could be photographed because that's not true especially once it has been photographed it becomes this little slice that has as i talked about earlier only the reference it, it no longer sits in time. It's com completely taken out of time and in that sense loses its indexicality to itself. Tillmans presents, as I said, his images as objects, as these photographic objects. We look at them and we see them as pictures, as pictorial plane in space. He heightens that they are pictures on paper. We read them, he, he places them in different ways in all exhibitions. They're not placed in usual ways so that he's heightening that way of looking and way of seeing, making sure that you know that you are looking at photographs. You're not looking at events or people, you are looking at photographs. And that is the essence of post-photography.